been rather unusually successful in business over the last few years. And um, so I just, and I think a big reason of that is uh, grabbing hold of ideas and opportunities when they approach. So I'm just gonna give kind of a brief history of what I've done in, for business owners and maybe you can take that in life and um, yeah. So um, my presentation is only seven slides long because I did it this morning, and, but it's good. So uh, in 2004, 2005, um, basically most of my 20s I spent as a ski patroller up at Kinky Norse. And um, I've always been interested in business. I started my first one when I was uh, 17. I coached freestyle skiing and I fumbled along a lot. Um, and anyway, so I was, uh, I was ski patrolling and I started a ski guiding company. I'm not a ski guide, but I started one. And um, I, I basically, how's this go? All right, so <laughs> my girlfriend at the time, um, her sister passed away in an avalanche in the Durant Glacier. And her sister, well, her parents found out about these ABS bags, so inflatable avalanche airbags, which keep you on the surface. And um, I decided that I would like to get one of these. And um, I decided that my guide at the time should have one. So I started having one, and these weren't widely available in Canada at the time. In fact, anything that came into the country came in illegally because the cartridges weren't approved by Transport Canada. Um, and I started retailing these and pushing them out a bit, and I, I found that there was a market for that, and there was, um, you know, at one year I sold 60 of them out of my closet. And literally out of my closet, they were stored in my closet. Um, and um, what, and a friend of mine was a ski guy, and he said, Chuck, there's this new one coming to market. And I thought, great, because the guy I bought it out was a total asshole. And I didn't like dealing with them. And so I phoned these guys in Switzerland, and I said, you know, I'd like to sell your stuff. And they said, um, well, we don't have a distributor. Um, do you think you could do that? And I thought, well, of course. You know, that's <laughs> not hard, sure. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> and uh, it's important to note, at that point, this company had approached some other companies, such as G3, which is a large ski company, and other ski companies, which had turned them down. And they turned them down because they didn't know that this was a market. They hadn't done their research into what was coming out in the future. Um, and my sales are probably now similar to what G3 does on a global scale. So um, yeah, I'm going to uh, continue here. Uh, so this is my first trade show, and this is my booth at the time, which is a 10 by 10. And uh, you know, I just kind of jumped on this opportunity. I thought, what the hell? Um, I had, I, uh, my initial order was 600 backpacks, which was about 300 grand, um, and I borrowed all that money, <laughs> pretty much, through the CBT um, and other organizations and about 50 grand from family and about 20 grand that I had myself. And I was really good at writing proposals, it turns out, and convincing people to believe in me. And um, yeah, and then we got. So current day, we're jumping ahead here. I probably shouldn't have shown this slide yet, but anyways. So today we do over 5 million in sales. Um, I currently have 11 staff, provide a lot of business to uh, some kind of attracted media business. Um, I have three independent businesses which are all profitable and we sell over 300 retail customers or retail, it says retail customers, that's not, that's stores. So I own three different, I kind of back up here guys, well, this is what you get for not practicing or writing in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Um, so I currently own, with this, I started, um, I thought, I got this and I started selling it when I started this distribution company, it's called Mountain Sports Distribution. And, um, and I also started a retail store at the same time because I thought, well, I needed a way to retail these as well to get the most profit margin. So I, I set up a retail store and I set them up independently um, and I set up a distribution business and I started gathering things. And so what I've done, sorry guys, I'm really fumbling here. This is. <laughs> so this is <laughs> what it looks like today in the distribution business, um, and this is just our warehouse here in Florida, and as you can see it's way overloaded and we're out of space again. Every two years we have to move. Um, this is our present day 
this is a trade show booth in Toronto last weekend, and this kind of what it looks like for us in representing the brand. And this is the third magazine. This is the third um, business which I haven't mentioned yet, which I started, which is called Mountain Slutter Magazine, and we recently came out with the first ever snowmobile guidebook um, that I know of anywhere. Um, so my take-home messages, because we're running short on time. Um, I apologize because I'm now contemplating. Anyway, so my take-home messages are be creative in your approaches to business and life. Think about what will work and do not confine yourself to the norms. So I've started three different businesses and I didn't know anything about any of them, really. I have a, and um, the staff question is often, you know, you know, we do that now, and my answer is always, well, we can't. So, you know, the other day, we were talking about what can we be as a business, and um, there's the op you've got all kinds of opportunities. Um, if you know that an idea or opportunity is solid and you have research or evidence to back that up, take it. So, um, like I said, you know, these companies approach G3, um, there's been lots of times in my life that um, people have said, well, you know, or there's other people that don't see those opportunities. If you see those opportunities, take them. Um, put yourself in positions that create opportunities. So again, that's if you're running a business or in life, if there are opportunities and those knock on the door, just jump on them. Financial debt and risk is okay if you know what the fuck you were doing. <laughs> That's a caveat there. But um, a lot of times I think people are scared of that going to business, and I feel that all the time. And it's, it's really important, and it's kind of how you make things go a lot of times to be able to finance stuff. So every year now, I, I still put my house on the line. Everything's on the line every year. It just gets bigger and bigger numbers. But it's all on the line. And uh, it's okay. Um, think about ideas which can either enhance what you're doing or take advantage of the resources that you may already have. So I think that's really important. A lot of businesses, you know, I started a magazine because I needed to spend money in marketing and I already had a distribution network. So it's really easy for me to have that publication and give it out to everybody. And I started a guidebook because I'm like, well, it's a good idea and I already have all these customers. And maybe you know, there's opportunities in other people's businesses where you already have resources that you can use um, to just do different things or access a different marketplace. And that's been something, that's probably been really helpful for me. Um, you know, the distribution, I started a distribution company because I got a distribution right for one product and I'm driving around and putting in all this work and I'm visiting all these dealers. So I spent months and years on the road trying to visit all these people. And I'm like, well, I can't sell them this one thing because it's not worth my time. I need to sell them more. So what other things can I add to what I'm already doing and just increase my profit margin and, um, and just increase what I'm doing? So that's been really helpful in terms of what I've done. Um, and working hard and treating people well. So obviously I worked my butt off to begin with and, and I've had some great help though along the way and my staff at the moment are awesome and and we have almost zero turnover um, which I'm really proud of. Um, we have a foosball table, we have dogs running around at work, um, it's a bit of a madhouse but people have a great time, there's impromptu dance parties sometimes It's um, and joking and it's not, not an environment for every company, but in my company it seems to work really well and people have, uh, have worked really hard for that. And, um, yeah, and so that's really my messed up presentation in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs>